Hey, what is up guys? It's Brendan here. Today we're going to be covering Shopify payment setup and how to add payment gateways in Shopify. So if you go to the homepage of your Shopify stores dashboard, you may see this right here where it says, choose the way your store accepts payments, enable a payment provider so your customers can check out and you can get paid. If that is there, then you could just click right here on enable payment provider. But if that is no longer there for you, maybe you've already set up part other parts of your store or you just don't see this here. I'm going to be showing you how to get to it from the settings. So if you don't see this button, you could just click there directly. That'll take you right to the page. But in case you don't have that button, you go over to settings and then you're going to go over to payments. So enable and manage your store's payment providers. All right, and then as you can see, you're here on the payments page. Now, on your store, you're likely not going to be seeing this. This is just a test store that I have set up. So this is the how it looks for development stores. So you probably won't be seeing this here, but everything else should look the same. So you're going to see here as payment providers, you're going to be able to accept payments on your store using providers like Shopify Payments, third-party services, and other payment methods. So Shopify Payments is honestly the best. If you're going to be setting up and accepting payments, I would recommend just using Shopify Payments. It's going to be super simple and easy to get set up. And I'll go over the specific fees as well. And then all you have to click on is activate Shopify Payments. And that will then take you to this page here where you're going to be importing the important details about your business. So as far as how to answer these, these are all up to you depending on the business type. Now you're either going to have individual, sole proprietor, single member, LLC. So if you're just setting things up and you're just getting started, you don't have any specific business entity. If it is all just owned by you, then as an individual, this is what you select here, individual, sole proprietor, single member, LLC. If you do have other business types already established, such as a corporation, uh, LLC with maybe multiple partners or a partnership or nonprofit, then you can go ahead and select that option. But if you're just getting started without any type of specific setup, then I then you're just going to select individual sole proprietor single member LLC. That's what that's what most people would end up going with, uh, unless you already have these registered. Then you're going to type in employee ID, employer identification number, your EIN, which is optional. If you don't have it, then don't worry about it. There, you're going to type in the business address. And then under the personal details, this is going to be your personal information there as well as last four digits there. So you're going to type in your personal information here. This is for the account as a business owner or a significant shareholder. So this should be the owner of this business that types in that. And then under product details, this part is actually pretty important here. So when you're selecting your product details and what your business is about, you're going to want to make sure you select the industry. So depending on what type of industry that you're in, let's just say you're in retail. All right, and let's say you create or sell beauty products. So this is just an example here of a description. You could go more into detail describing your products or services. This does matter for the payment gateway as far as getting accepted when you apply for Shopify payments, because depending on the type of industry or business that you're in, they may or may not accept you. Most businesses are going to be accepted, but that is subject to what they accept. So just make sure you detail out what your business's products are and what you're selling and what your business is about so that they can get you accepted and and so they really fully understand what you're actually selling on the platform. Then next down here, you're going to have a customer billing statements. So here is just the name of the store. This will show up on your customer's bank statements. So make sure that you do put in a, this could be a Google voice number as well. Uh, it just make sure that it's a number that customers can reach you at, whether it's a support line or something that you have set up. I wouldn't put any kind of personal information there because your customers will be able to see that. So you don't want customers contacting your personal number. Yeah, you could just set up a Google voice number that will work just fine there. And then under the statement descriptor, just make sure that this is detailed enough so that customers can understand, oh, that I bought a product from this company and that's what the, the company's name is. You just list out your company name right there for the statement descriptor. That's how uh, customers will be able to identify you. And then after that, you just enter in your banking information. This is where the funds will be deposited into this account. So routing an account number. As you can see, these numbers can be found at the bottom of a check or by contacting your bank. So make sure you get these set up correctly. Make sure you don't mix them up. Make sure that you enter them in correctly. 
And then as you can see, you can also have the hassle-free bill payments with Shopify balance. So if you do wanna pay for your Shopify plan, then the balance of your sales will be used to pay Shopify bills, whether it be for the Shopify plan or other apps that you're paying for. Basically, instead of them billing your bank account, they'll just pay for it from your Shopify balance. So any remaining funds will appear in the next payout. So that's pretty cool. And then all you have to do here is click complete account setup if you're going to be finishing setting everything up. And when it comes to payouts and getting paid with Shopify payments, this is the pay period and payout timeline that you can expect. So pay period refers to the amount of time between the day the customer places an order on your store and then the day that those funds from that order are sent to your bank account. So this is when you'll actually receive the funds. So this is the timeline depending on the country where your store is based. So as you can see here for Australia and the United States, that pay period is two business days. And then you have Austria, Canada, and so on and so forth for three business days. And then these countries are listed out at four business days. So depending on what country you're in, that will affect the pay period timeline, as well as the fact that it's important to consider that the funds might not show up right in your bank account after they're sent as banks take between 24 to 72 hours to process those deposits into your bank account, as well as the fact that the funds from orders placed on Friday, Saturday, Sunday are grouped and sent together as one payment. So that's kind of the timeline you can expect there with pay periods as to when you're going to be getting paid with Shopify payments. And as you can see here as well, that Shopify payments is available only to stores in certain countries. And we'll be going over the list of supported countries in just a little bit. Now, as far as the credit card rates go for Shopify payments, as you can see, it's as low as 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. And there are zero transaction fees. This does depend on the Shopify plan that you are on. So if you take a look at the Shopify pricing page, if you're considering whether or not you want to get set up with Shopify, the basic Shopify plan is that $29 a month and the credit or the online credit card rates with Shopify payments as you can see here is 2.9% plus 30 cents and then if you upgrade to the, ba the base Shopify plan or advanced Shopify you can see that those credit card rates now these are subject to change depending on when Shopify changes these but this is what they are currently for online credit card rates so as you can see, as you scale up, it does make sense to upgrade plans depending on the total sales volume that your business generates through Shopify, then it makes sense to possibly upgrade so that you can save more money based on that percentage. Although you're going to have to run the numbers yourself to see if that makes sense for you. But over time, uh, it, it will actually be cheaper to upgrade the plan and pay more money per month because you're going to end up saving that on the payment credit card rate that you would be paying. So that's something to consider as well. And then down here, you can see there are additional fees using all payment providers other than Shopify payments. So this is something to consider when you're thinking about utilizing other payment providers outside, outside of Shopify payments, which we will be getting into in just a moment. Another thing to consider with Shopify payments is that it is only supported in con certain countries and regions. Now, they have done a lot of work to expand this into various different countries, but these are what they are currently available as of the time of making this video. United States, of course, and Shopify payments is not available to US territories except Puerto Rico. And then you have United Kingdom, Sweden, you have Spain, Singapore, New Zealand, Belgium, the Netherlands, Japan, Italy, Ireland, Hong Kong, Germany, Denmark, Canada, Austria, and Australia. So this is the list to see if Shopify payments is available for you specifically. And as you can see, if it is not supported by Shopify payments, then you're going to have to look at other payment gateways, which we're just about to get into that in just a second. There are a long list of different payment gateways that Shopify does support that you can take a look at as well. Honestly, if you can use Shopify payments, that's going to be your best bet. But if you do have to use other providers, then that is available as well. Now, taking a look at those other different types of payment gateway providers that you can use within Shopify, PayPal is one of them. And honestly, the best setup for most people is going to be setting up Shopify payments for credit cards and then adding the PayPal feature as well for that express checkout because a lot of customers just click the PayPal button. A lot of people already use PayPal. Boom, it's a super fast checkout. They don't have to enter any additional information. If they're already signed into their PayPal account, they just click the button and it goes right 
through the checkout there. So, and all you do is click activate PayPal Express checkout and it's pretty straightforward there as far as PayPal. If you can't use Shopify payments, you can only accept PayPal, then that's another option for you there. And beyond that, you also have Amazon Pay as another option. So this is a button on your store checkout, very similar to PayPal, you have Amazon Pay, so people can utilize the information that is stored in their Amazon account. So this is really another great way to boost the conversion rates there between different payment providers and accepting payments on your store. So you have PayPal and Amazon Pay, you could activate all of them. You could just have a whole bunch, you know, accept all the different payment methods as possible. Uh, that is up to you if you want to do that. And then lastly, in these third party providers here, we're going to explore this a little bit. These are providers that allow you to accept payment methods at that set rate. And then you also have the additional fees based on what plan you're on. In addition, if you're not using Shopify payments, these are the different third party providers. As you can see, there is a long, long list of them. They each come with their own little specific details. If you're depending on the types of products that you're selling, then you might want to use a different payment provider. Uh, these are all different options as well. I've mentioned to check out in other videos on the channel as well as a few of these other different providers but it's up to you to look into the specifics there but you do have a lot of options if you're not using shopify payments you do have other alternative payment gateways that you can use that accept various different types of payments so that's another option there and then lastly here you have the alternative payment methods so these are alternative payment so this is good for like latin american countries if you're going to be accepting vouchers or then you have china payments so bitpay as well if you want to accept bitcoin uh, then you could set that up as well so they really and they have alipay as well they really have a lot of different global so depending on the the what country you're in or what types of customers that you're accepting payments from you can really expand even into coinbase so all the different cryptocurrencies you can really quite expand out to all the different types of payments that you want to accept on your store so it, depending on the customer, this can really, really help you out as a benefit to using Shopify. And then down here, lastly, you also have the manual payment methods. So these could be money orders, cash on, del on delivery, or bank deposits, and you can even create custom payment methods. Not going to go into the specifics of that in this video here today, but you can look into that as well, the manual payment methods. So you have to approve these on their order before fulfilling. So that is something to consider. Honestly, if you do the automatic payment gateways, it's a lot more scalable, but depending on the business that you're operating, you may need to set up these manual payment methods. So that's something to consider there. And then lastly here on the payment capture, I would definitely leave it on automatic so that you don't miss it when you're fulfilling orders is the customer's payment method is authorized and charged automatically. So you wanna automatically capture payments. Of course, depending on the type of business, you might wanna switch it to manual. Uh, but just make sure for most people, you're going to want to set it on automatic just so it's ready to go and you don't have to worry about it or think about it. So that as soon as the sale is processed, it's captured and then you can get right to fulfilling their order as soon as possible. Alrighty guys, so that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well and the notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And that is all for today guys, so we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.